better turn this one off, huh? Okay. How are you guys tonight? <laughs> Man, I feel good. God is so good. I've just been bathing and soaking in Him. And uh, I just feel, uh, I don't even know how to describe. But uh, I feel better than this microphone. What happened here? Hang on. Okay. All right, so... Well, let's get our eyes on Jesus. I want to I want to take a moment in prayer with you guys before before we get started. So Lord, we just look to you tonight. God, our eyes are on you, Lord. Lord, in the middle of life, Lord, in the middle of the storms of life, God, middle of the wind and the waves of the sea around us, Lord. Lord, we just thank you, God, that we can rest easy, Lord, even as Jesus did, God, when he was asleep, Lord, in the middle of the storm, God. He was not worried. He was not uh, uh, weighed down, God. He was, <laughs> he was not afraid, Lord, because he knew where he came from and he knew where he was going. And his eyes were on you, Lord. You said that you... Uh, you, uh, he whose mind was stayed upon you, you would keep him in perfect peace. Lord, you said that uh, he whose ways please the Lord, you would uh, make even his enemies to be at peace with him. So, Lord, we look to you, God, in these troubled times, Lord. We look to you, God, in all the trials uh, and tribulations of life, God. Our eyes are on you, Lord. As Jehoshaphat said, Lord, we don't know what to do with all these enemies that have come against us. But, Lord, our eyes are on you. So, Lord, we look to you tonight, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, Lord. And we know the end. And the end is good because you are good, Lord. And your mercy endures forever. Lord, so just uh, refocus us tonight, Lord. Whoever uh, needs to be refocused, Lord, get our eyes fixed on you again, Lord, tonight. And Lord, may your spirit have uh, uh, control, Lord. Have your way, Lord, here tonight, Lord, in me, in us, Lord, in every heart, in every soul, in every mind, every ear, God. Open our ears Lord, that we might hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the churches. Lord, open our eyes that we might see, Lord, what the Spirit of God is doing, Lord, in the earth today, God. And that we might join together uh, with you, Lord. And, uh, Lord, see great and wonderful things, Lord, that uh, we would... Lord, you said that you are doing a new thing in the earth uh, even if I told you, you wouldn't believe. Uh, wonderful things, Lord, in the earth, God. So, Lord, we just want to be a part, Lord. Fine-tune us, God. Lord, anything that is not right in our hearts, Lord, anything that we're believing that's not right, make it right. Make straight the way of the Lord in us. God, rearrange our thoughts. Rearrange our minds, Lord. Rearrange everything in us, Lord, until every word that proceeds forth out of our mouth is full of faith, full of hope, full of love, full of the power of the Holy Spirit, even as the oracles of God, Lord. And Lord, even as Samuel, Lord, uh, spoke and you did not let any of his words fall to the ground. God, I pray that you would so capture and captivate us, Lord, as sons of the Most High God, Lord, that we would never speak a word that, was, uh, that fell to the ground, Lord. Never speak a word that was not of your spirit, God, that it would always accomplish what you have sent uh, 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 it forth into the earth to accomplish, Lord. So we look to you, God. We give this night to you, Lord. <laughs> Lord, and even though I've had some scriptures uh, in, Lord, that I've outlined, Lord, I just uh, give it to you, God. And if you don't want any of them, Lord, 
Just say what you want to say. I release it to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, God, we give you thanks. Amen. Well, I had a whole long list of scriptures, but as I'm uh, here, I'm, you know, many other things are coming to my mind. So I don't know exactly where this is going to go, but we're just going to get started. And uh, I tell you, the older I get, <laughs> the more focused I want to be in life. I've been thinking about it today, and I just want to de devote the rest of my life to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. I want, I want to focus. You know, I've, I've always heard that uh, he who those who are, are the most focused in life accomplish the most in life. And I, I don't know about you, but I don't do a whole lot of things well. In fact, I do very few things well. I, I, I'm, I'm weak in my flesh. But what God has made me to do, what He lives in me to do, is to pray and to minister the Word of God. And I, I know now that, that I've tried many other things and I'm not very good at a whole lot of other things. But I know that the Spirit of God that is alive in me lives to pray and for the ministry of the word, even as Jesus ever lives to make intercession uh, for, for us, I know that that's a part of the DNA, his DNA, that he's put in me. And so I want, uh, I, I'm really thinking hard on these things today. I, I really want to focus on prayer and the ministry of the word. I, I think this is how, I, how I'm wired and how I'm going... God in me is going to accomplish the most in the earth. And so, none of this was on my list to say, but uh, I tell you, this is the time. This is the hour. This is the generation. This is our generation. This is our time to shine. This is our time to go forward with faith and power of the Holy Spirit. This is our time, as it was John the Baptist's time, to, to be uh, a burning and shining lamp to his generation. Do you understand? This is your hour. And I hear the Lord saying uh, to his sons, Arise! Arise, my love. This is your hour. You have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Arise. Stand up. Put one foot in front of the other by faith. Open your ears. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Open your eyes to see. And then move in faith. I recently saw the movie uh, Robin Hood, and uh, it was not as good as I had thought it would be, but uh, there was a lot of good parts in it, and one thing I took out of it uh, more than the others is this sword that he had given to him by a fallen comrade in the, uh, the military, you know? They, the sword, he unraveled uh, the part that you hold, whatever that part is called. And on that, on the inside it said, rise uh, and rise again until lambs become lions. And I just, just re something about that reverberated in my spirit. And I think it's because I, I've been so timid in the past. I've been so... You know, there's many opportunities where I think that God uh, had brought me to the mountain to go up the mountain. But then for whatever reason, I shrunk back and I just continued marching around the mountain. You know, as uh, Joshua uh, and Caleb and all the Israelites, they kept marching around the mountain. And what was a three-day journey... 
supposed to be a three-day journey, took them 40 years. <clears throat> because of lack of faith, because <laughs> they walked around murmuring and complaining and griping and groaning and, you know, oh, that we could go back to Egypt. We had a good life, the leeks and the onions and the meat of Egypt, you know. And so they turn backwards. You know, how many know that uh, uh, Jesus said, whoever put, the man who puts his hand to the plow and turns back is not worthy of me. You remember? <laughs> you remember Lot's wife? Yeah, none of this is even on my list. Remember Lot's wife? <laughs> you know, she, they... They were told to get up and get out of Sodom and Gomorrah. And they lingered and they lingered and they lingered, you know. They were comfortable somewhat there. And they were afraid to step out in the, the unknown. And so they lingered until the angel of the Lord came and moved them, you know, carried them outside the city. You know, how many of you know that we have help? Ministering spirits, the angels are ministering spirits sent to minister to those who will inherit salvation. Thanks be to God for the angels who came and who fed Elijah when he was weary in the wilderness, when he was running from Jezebel. Jezebel is the spirit of this age, the spirit of the world that wants to choke out the life of the prophets of God, those who are full of faith. Well, uh, you know, she wants to choke them out and, and make them run like she made Elijah run in that day, you know? But the angel of the Lord came as he was running from Jezebel and in the wilderness where he fell over and was weary, the angel of the Lord came and prepared bread and uh, baked it on coals of fire and uh, had a, a glass, I think, of water there. Said, get up, Elijah. Get up and eat, for the journey is long. So he got up and he ate, and then he fell back to sleep. So the angel of the Lord prepared again and woke him up again and said, Eat, Elijah, for the journey is long. So he ate and he ran for 40 days in the strength of that food. And I've... <laughs> Some of you tonight... Some of us have been going through difficult seasons. Some of us have fainted and grown weary in the desert. But I'm here to tell you, friend, that uh, greater is he who's in you than he who's in the world. More are those who are with you than those who are in the world. Jesus will come. He will send ministering spirits to feed you the bread of life to feed you the water, the living water, so you can go forth into your calling, into your ministry, into His purpose and His plan for your life. This is your hour. This is the generation. Don't miss it. Don't worry if you've fallen. Don't worry if you failed. Don't worry if you've... Uh, laid things down that you should have uh, taken up and run with. Uh, he said that, uh, I can't remember who it was, maybe it was Timothy. Paul said to Timothy, uh, I think it was Timothy, that thing which you had begun to do uh, so long ago, do it! Whatever God has put in your heart to do, do it! The wisest words that were ever said, I think, in heaven or on earth, is what? Mary, the mother of Jesus, said to Jesus, uh, uh, to, to those people that were around Jesus when they ran out of wine. They came to her with their problem. We got no wine. What do we do? Whatever he says, do it. And so they did and made new wine. He, Jesus made the water turn into the wine. And it was the best wine of all. The people said, this is the best. You say the best to last. I tell you, this time over in Africa, one thing I didn't tell you guys this Sunday was uh, we had started with our new sound system. 
having church every Sunday. Every Sunday we would have church at, uh, I think it was 4 o'clock in the afternoon. All the people were coming and, you know, we were just having an awesome time. God was showing up. God was manifesting himself. You know, the, the witch doctor lady uh, came and got delivered. We burned her house down at her request. You know, we, you know, her witch doctor house, we didn't do it just, you know, for the fun of it. No, she asked for us to do it. It wasn't her, the house that she lived in, but the house that her, she did her witch doctor stuff in. And so anyway, uh, we were just moving in his presence, bathing in his spirit and um, declaring uh, things over uh, the earth. De declaring things over the village, over the city. You know, God said uh, uh, to Job, if you will turn to me with your whole heart, turn back to me with your whole heart, uh, then uh, you, I will become your treasure. Uh, you know, your greatest rich is your treasure, and you will declare a thing and watch it established. And so we were into this. Declaring and watching things being established and stretching our faith. And uh, one day we were just drinking in the wine, declaring, drinking in the wine. You know, just declaring we're going to drink the wine. And, and uh, some difficult times came in uh, after that. The sound system died. Everybody... You know, we couldn't find a way to continue on with the sound system. People were losing their interest. The children were playing and the people were playing. So we decided we're going to go around the city to find a chord, you know, because we couldn't find anything else that would make it work. And so uh, as we took off, we were looking from house to house, place to place, you know, uh, business to business, uh, trying to find this cord, and we couldn't find it. But everywhere we go, just every place that we went, the joy of the Lord uh, uh, began to manifest itself, unspeakable, full of glory. We would dance. We would, when we got to the houses, we would dance. You know, and as I, uh, we would rejoice in Him. And I remember as I left, one of my disciples said, everybody's losing heart, everybody... You know, it's doing their own thing because we don't have a sound system. I, I said, listen, it's important how we handle this. It's important how you handle it. You know, we walk by faith, not by sight. You know, we're not affected by the circumstances around us. We walk in the spirit. So let's give thanks to God. Let's rejoice. Let's dance. Let's worship. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. I don't care what's going on around your life. If you will give thanks to God, if you will praise him, yes. you will enter his gates. You yes. will enter his courts. Yes. Do you understand that? Yes. Yes. So we went out doing that very thing. We were tempted to be discouraged, you know, those around but something arose in me, you know, where the, where the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard against him. And he lifted up a standard in my heart, the Word of God. He breathed on it by the Spirit of God. And we began, I began to sing and we began to worship. And then it began to uh, increase. And everywhere we went, we danced out in front of people, you know, out on the streets, out in their yards out in front of their businesses in the middle of the city until the people in the city around us though uh, they had a like a bus where they all travel a community bus and they were watching it was actually not a bus it's like a truck they were all standing up in the back of it you know bunch of people and they were watching us just full of the oil of joy and gladness, full of the Spirit. And they said, you guys, they started doing this. You guys, and I said, you're right. We have been drinking. 
but it's not what you think. This is the what new wine. This is not the wine of this world. This is the wine prepared by the Holy Spirit. This is the wine of the Spirit of God. When God uh, uh, lives in you, then he can take the worst of circumstances and turn them upside down, completely around, turn your life inside out until you just rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. <laughs> this is our inheritance. Whew. Don't let anyone steal it from you. You know, Jesus went into, God, I've said nothing of what I was going to say. Nothing. Jesus went into the um, temple and he found those there money changers doing business. And so he made a whip of cords and he began to drive them out. said, take these things out of here. For it is written, my father's house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. But you have made it a den of thieves. You want to know why they, made, he made, they, they have made it a den of thieves? It's simple, man. They, they were just, they were more concerned about their own lives and their own ways and their own business than they were about the business of God. My House shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. Huh? Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> they, they got it out for me. You understand? And because they were busy about their own lives, busy about their businesses. No, I don't have time to uh, go to church on Sunday or Wednesday. No, I don't have time to get up and read the Bible in the morning. I've got all this to do. I've got all that to do. And guess what? As soon as you adopt that attitude, as soon as you sit in front of the TV all day long, instead of worshiping and praying and giving thanks to the living God, seeking out His Word, the enemy's going to come in. And your house, instead of the temple of the Holy Spirit, full of faith, full of the Word of God, full of the presence of God, all of a sudden you find, oh, oh, I'm discouraged. Oh, I'm scared. Oh, I'm this, I'm that. Oh, what am I going to do? It's because you've not sought first the kingdom of God. Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You understand? But when we put other things first, then we're going to suffer. Then the enemy's going to come in. So I'm saying this is your time. This is your hour. This is the generation. It's your time to shine. Are you shining? Are you shining? Remember the five wise virgins and five uh, foolish virgins. The five foolish virgins, uh, they took their lamps but they did not put any oil in their lamps. And so when Jesus returned, they weren't ready. They weren't ready. They didn't have any oil in their lamps. They weren't burning and shining lamps. But the five wise virgins, they spent their time. They burned the midnight oil seeking God. They got up in the morning. They worshiped. They prayed. They sought him. And they were ready. Do you understand? Are you shining? Are you filling your lamp with that oil? Are you ready for the challenges of the day? Jesus came to a fig tree. You know? He, he and his disciples passed by a fig tree. He came to that fig tree looking for fruit. But it was not the season for figs. It wasn't the season for figs, but he was looking for figs. And because he did not find figs, 
Cursed shall you be. No one will ever eat fruit off of you again. Do you understand what this means? Faith has no seasons. There is no season for faith. Faith is always be ready in season, out of season, all the time to preach the word, to move in faith. There is no season for faith. When Jesus comes, it's written, when Jesus comes to the earth, will he really find faith on the earth? You understand? He's coming. He's knocking daily at the door of your heart. Is he finding the faith in him? Is he finding a heart that diligently seeks, that diligently pursues, a heart that obeys, a heart that steps out, a heart that cries out to him? Is, he, is that what he's finding? Or is he finding a fig tree with no figs on it? You understand? Let me see if there's something over here that I wanted to not leave out. Okay. You remember Jesus talking about, I'm, I'm not even going to this now. <laughs> remember Jesus talking about um, the man, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who built his house on uh, the sand. And then the wind and the waves and the torment uh, came. This, the wind and the waves beat against it, uh, uh, against that house, and it fell. And great was the fall thereof. But the man who built his house on the rock, the wind and the waves and the torment of the day came and it did not fall. It stood firm. It stood strong on the rock. He had dug deep. He spent the midnight oil. He got up in the morning. He worshiped God. He prayed. He, he read the word of God. He, he sought uh, the presence of the living God. He sought the oil. And no matter what happened in the day, he founded his day on the rock. You see? Is your, are you founding your days on the rock? If you found it on the rock, if you dig daily, you're going to... He said, he whose mind is stayed on the Lord, he shall keep him in perfect peace. And he said also that uh, uh, when a man's ways please the Lord, he will make even his enemies to be at peace with him. You understand? And how are we going to know the ways of the Lord if we don't even seek, if we don't search, if we don't, aren't diligently pursuing Him? You understand? <laughs> so, gosh. Okay, I want to say something here. I, I want to go to at least a couple of scriptures here. Um, what time do you guys usually let go on Wednesday night? Okay, 2 Timothy 1, 9 through 11. It says, who, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began, but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death 
and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, to which I was appointed a preacher and an apostle, a teacher of the Gentiles. I want you to catch this. has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. Do you understand that? Do you remember the shadow of death? There's a shadow of death. You know, not just the death of this uh, flesh here, but there's a shadow Sorrow, sighing, sadness, crying, misery, suffering, pain, sickness, disease. But it says right here, Jesus has abolished death and brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. The gospel is eternal life. Jesus is eternal life. And he's dwelling in you. You have eternal life dwelling in you. You don't have to suffer death. You don't have to suffer sorrow, sighing, sadness, sickness, disease. Jesus himself even said that uh, they, those who live and believe in me shall never die. Do you believe this? I believe it. And I am in hot pursuit. I'm in hot pursuit of this. Eternal life is abiding in me. And I want to receive it all. I want to receive it all. I want to live and not die. And I want to see those around live and not die. I think this is the call. This is the hour of this generation. God is waiting for a generation who will live and not die because they believe that Jesus came and he abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. You understand? Oh, I want to be full of the Spirit. I just want, man, we were just dancing and shouting and rejoicing until people thought we were just looped. You know, we were drunk and oh, we were enjoying it. There is no greater thing than to be full of the Spirit, full of the presence of the living God. There is nothing better. It's life to our mortal flesh. <laughs> we, our words have power. I, I, I tell you, we've been, I've been just declaring, I receive life. I receive life. I receive uh, health. I receive healing. I receive life. Immortality. You know, I'm going to receive it. It says here in Proverbs 31, 8 through 8, Open your mouth for the speechless in the cause of all who are appointed to die. Do you know that you have been commissioned to go out to open your mouth for those who cannot in the cause of those who are appointed to die to, see, to say death no longer has the power over those who believe. You're appointed to say that. You're appointed to go out and declare it. What you hear in your closet, you're to go up on the rooftop and shout it out. And I'm telling you, this is what I've been hearing in the Spirit. He has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Death no longer has dominion over us who believe. Let's read uh, Hebrews 2, 13 through 15. And again, I will put my trust in him. 
And again, here I am and the children whom God has given me. Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, uh, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and release those who through the fear of death were, were all their lifetime subject to bondage. He has destroyed him who had the power of death, the devil, who kept you in bondage through the fear of death. He has no dominion over you if you believe. God wants to so fill your heart, so fill your mind by the washing of the water of the word of God. He wants to transform you, renew you, restore you to the day that 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 he first created Adam and Eve, and even better, through Christ. You understand? (laughs) Where you have the mind of Christ, where you think the thoughts of the living God, where you speak the thoughts of his heart, where you declare and watch it established as he declared and the earth was made. You understand? You have this treasure In your earthen vessel, Christ in you, the hope of glory. His words will not fall to the ground. Only believe. Listen. Declare. You will receive. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What's your abundance? Make sure you fill your heart with his word and his spirit and declare what he's doing, what he's saying. For he, uh, uh, man, a man shall eat well by the fruit of his own lips. You understand that? You're eating what you're speaking. You are. We are. I want to be a perfectly trained man. He said uh, that no one has uh, uh, tamed the tongue. We've tamed all kinds of beasts and animals, and all kinds of things. But there's no one who's been able to tame the tongue. But he's talking about in the flesh. In the spirit, what's impossible for man is possible with God. He wants to so live in you that you take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ until you live and not die because you believe. In him. Okay. He actually even tells us to seek immortality in Romans 2, 7, 7. Eternal life to those who by patient continuance in doing good seek for glory, honor, and immortality that dwells alone in unapproachable light. He himself... Is the immortality dwelling alone in unapproachable light? Are you seeking him? <laughs> oh, man. He sent his word and healed them of all their destructions. That's what I want, friend. That's what he wants for you to be alive in you. Living epistles written by the hand of God before all men. Do you want to be that? This is your hour. This is the time. The kingdom has come. It's here. It's now. It's around you. It's within you. It's all around. We're surrounded by the city of God. The angels, the saints, the prophets, the apostles, the fathers in the faith. They're here. They're watching. The kingdom is established. He said, it is finished. (laughs) It's finished. It's done for him who believes, for him who has ears to hear and eyes to see. It is finished. (laughs) But for those, the the kingdom of heaven is like uh, a sower of seeds who when he goes out and sows seed, some falls by the wayside and gets uh, carried away by the birds. Some falls on the rocks. It doesn't bear fruit. Some falls into uh, 
uh, shallow ground and doesn't bear any fruit, but others, uh, and, some, and some falls in the midst of thorns and gets choked out. What's going on in our hearts, friends? That seed, is the seed still in the barn? That's another scripture. Is the seed still in the barn? You know, what He's put in you, what are you doing with it? Are you walking by faith? Are you living it out? You understand? Ah, guard our hearts, Lord. Guard our hearts, God. What does it say here in Deuteronomy? I'm going to try to just go fast here through, because these are yeah, so many awesome scriptures. Deuteronomy 30, 19 through uh, 20. I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you today. That I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life, that both you and your descendants may live. That you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice, and that you may cling to him. For he is your life and the length of your days. And that you may dwell in the land which I swore to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give to them. In uh, Proverbs 3, 1 through 2, it says, My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands for length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Isaiah 65, 22. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree, so shall be the days of my people. And my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. We were never meant to die, people. Never meant to die. Adam and Eve would have lived forever if they had believed God. Okay. Psalm 107.10 or... Psalm 107, 17 through 20. Fools, because of their transgressions and because of their iniquities, were afflicted. Their soul abhorred all manner of food. They drew near to the gates of death. They cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and He saved them out of their distresses. He sent His word and healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. So I, He has sent His word to heal us of all our destructions. If you're going through some hard times, if you're going through some difficulties, if you're going through things, you don't understand what, I tell you, I, like Jehoshaphat said, Lord, I don't know what to do with all these enemies that surround Israel, but our eyes are on you. Get your eyes on him. He sent his word to heal you. Dig. Pour out your heart and your soul before Him, and He will heal everything. Psalm 107.10 Those who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death, bound in affliction and irons, because they rebelled against the words of God and despised the counsel of the Most High, uh, then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and He saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and broke their chains in pieces. Psalm 79, 11, Let the groaning of the prisoner come before you. According to the greatness of your power, preserve those who are appointed to die. Psalm 102, 17, 20. He shall regard the prayer of the destitute. He shall not despise their prayer. This will be written for the generation to come that a people yet to be created may praise the Lord. For he looked down from the height of his sanctuary. From heaven the Lord viewed the earth to hear the groaning of the prisoner to release those appointed to death. Jesus came saying, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And upon those who sat in the region and the shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. 
So, yeah. Well, the kingdom is at hand. Are we ready? Are we ready? Are we seeing? Are we hearing? Are we crying out? Okay, a couple more scriptures I want to go over, and then we're going to pray for people. Who among us, uh, Isaiah 33, 17, who among us shall dwell with uh, the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burnings? Isaiah 33, 14, he who walks righteously and speaks uprightly. What is righteousness? The righteousness of faith. Faith in Jesus Christ. He who walks righteously, speaks uprightly. He who despises the gain of oppressions. He who gestures with, uh, who gestures with his hands, refusing bribes. Who stops his ears from the hearing of bloodshed. And who shuts his eyes from seeing evil. He will dwell on high. His place of defense will be the fortress of rocks. Bread will be given him. His water will be sure. Your eyes will see the king in his beauty. They will see the land that is very far off. So he said, guard your heart, for out of it flow the issues of life. I, I don't know about you, but I want my bread to be sure. I want my water to be sure. I want to see the beauty of the king. I want to see the land that is very far off. And yet is so near. <laughs> the kingdom is here and now. The city of God surrounds us. Do we see? Are we seeing? Are we hearing? Who may ascend the hill of the Lord or stand in His holy place? He who has clean hands, a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully, uh, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. So I'm saying some, I'm going over some scriptures, some basic scriptures, because I want that river, that fountain, that, that gusher of living water to flow freely in us. And so these are some things to help us to... Start us thinking, what's happening in my life? Why am I running up against this wall? Why am I hitting this blockage? Why this? Why am I suffering? I, I'm reading these things for that reason. You understand? <laughs> How many know that uh, Jacob and... Uh, all, all the fathers in the faith, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, everywhere they went, they dug wells. But then the Philistines came. The Philistines came and filled up the wells with dirt, with filth, the filth of this life, the filth of this world. You know, sometimes we need, we need to guard our heart for out of it flow the issues of life. So some of these things, I just spoke to prod your heart to, to help us to... Dig out, dig out that wellspring of life so we can flow, so you can be on the streets of the city out here, so full of the Spirit, drunk in the Spirit, worshiping, praying, giving thanks to God, and just bubbling over with joy. You understand? Okay, so...
Blessed is the man whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of weeping, Baca, they make it a spring. The rain covers its pools. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. It says uh, in Job 17.9, Yet the righteous will hold to his way. And he who has clean hands will be stronger and stronger. Stronger and stronger. Walk in the faith. Clean hands, pure heart, a right spirit by faith in him. And you will go from strength to strength, from glory to glory. Those who behold his face go from glory to glory. And how do you behold his face? Clean hands, pure heart, right spirit, seek him. He carries you up in the spirit on the mountain of the Lord. I want to go up. You know, on the mountain. I started this out saying, I've, I've in the past not gone forward in the faith as I should have. I've missed some opportunities, I believe. But I tell you, I want to be like what uh, I, that sword said, uh, rise and rise again until lambs become lions. I don't want any, nothing has to get you down. If you've been beaten, if you've been defeated, if you've been... Uh, dismayed don't stay down get up pray they who wait upon the lord shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not grow weary they shall walk and not faint eternal life is yours immortality is yours the promises of god all of them are yes and amen in christ jesus 2 Corinthians 5, 4, For we who are in this tent be, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Are you, are you wanting to be more clothed in Christ? Are you digging? Are you searching diligently until He fills all in all? Until you're full, filled with the fullness of Him who fills all in all? Okay. Well, I said this last week. Uh, I don't know if everybody was here, but just uh, this is the end here. It says, uh, then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father. When he puts an end to all rule and all authority and all power. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. I will not drive them out from you in one year, your enemies, lest they become desolate and the beasts of the field too many. But little by little I will drive them out until you've increased until you inherit the land. I think this is what happened with Enoch. He sought God with all of his heart, soul, mind, and strength. Diligently it says that... Uh, uh, Enoch walked with God and was not. For God took him by faith. Enoch walked with God and was not. For God took him before he took him. He had this testimony that he pleased God. For without faith, it is impossible to please him. He who comes to God must believe that God is. And there's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Friends, I think what happened with Enoch is he caught a vision of this. He saw the vision that was written down. And he said, it's mine. It's mine. As Caleb said, I'm as strong as I was when I was 40 years old. I might be 80 years old. I might have fallen many times. I might have gone around that mountain for 40 years. But I am as strong as before because the Spirit of the Lord is in me. It's filling me with His strength. And I'm going to, that's my mountain. Give it here. I think that's what Enoch did. I think he allowed the grace of God. He sought God diligently till he was filled with the grace of God that overcame all things. God put every, God reigned over him, I believe, uh, reigned over everything in his life, driving every enemy out, little by little, 
little by little, little by little, until all enemies of the cross of Jesus Christ were under his feet. Until he said, I'm so pleased with Enoch that I'm going to give him even the victory over the last enemy, death. <laughs> that's our inheritance. And that's what I'm going for. And I'm not going to stop until, I, until he gives it to me. I'm going to lay hold of this by faith in Jesus Christ. I'm going to confess it. I'm going to believe it. I'm going to receive it. You know, and Elijah also did not die. He was carried up by a flame of fire, chariots of fire into the heavens. <laughs> Friends, it's your inheritance. Let's go for it. This is your hour. This is your generation. Do you want to be a burning and shining lamp? Do you want to be filled with the Spirit? Do you want to receive the victory over all enemies of the cross of Jesus Christ? I do. So let's pray. Let's, let's, I want to pray for everybody. And then we're, anybody that wants to come up can be coming up. And I, I will pray for whoever wants prayer. Lord, I just give this to you, God. Lord, you sent your word and healed us of all of our destructions. God, you sent Jesus who has abolished death and brought life and liberty to life in the gospel. God, we want it. We need it, God. We look to you, God. We desire it. Lord, change our hearts. Let, let the abundance of our hearts speak forth the mysteries of God. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. Lord, we want more of you. We want more of your presence. We want more, God. Fill each one of us, Lord. <laughs> Lord, help us. Lord, we want to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. God, we don't want anything in our hearts and our lives that's not of you. Lord, make straight the way of the Lord in us. <laughs> Lord, we love you, God. Commit it to you. I forgot about one scripture. He said, I tell you a mystery. Paul said, we shall not all sleep. <laughs> but we shall be transformed in the moment, in the twinkling of the eye, until uh, death, uh, until corruption has put on incorruption, and mortality, immortality. We shall not all sleep. What did Jesus say when he was healing the dead girl? She's asleep. And they laughed him to scorn. But he was talking about death. We shall not all sleep. For we shall be changed, transformed in the twinkling of an eye. <laughs> we, when we put on, when this corruptible is put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, I want some of that. If anybody else wants some of that, come up here. Let's pray together. I will pray with you. And you can pray over me. Because <laughs> I ain't there yet. But I'm on my way. <laughs> I'm seeking the city. I don't know if there's any music we can play or whatever, but. Oh. Well, we just enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise, God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the victory. The victory is ours when the battle is the Lord's. So, Lord, we just commit him to you. God, whatever is not right, Lord, uh, in him, in us, Lord, make it right, God. None of us are right. Lord, none of us, we have all fallen short, God. 
So Lord, we ask for your kingdom to come and your will to be done in us on earth as it is in heaven, God. We want to dedicate ourselves to you, to prayer, to the ministry of the word. God, we just release in him, God, your spirit, Lord, to move and uh, have your being. Lord, in Him, God, heal, restore, deliver. God, you sent your word to heal Him, to heal us of all of our destructions, God. We look to you, God. We receive it. Lord, thank you, God. At the table with you, Jesus. Blessed are the